The Big Bad Wolf Strikes Back, written by Dimitri Karras, illustrated by Chase Pratel. Once upon a time, three bad wolves lived with their father, the Big Bad Wolf. The wolves all loved to eat pigs. One day, one of those pigs had armed himself with an AR-15 and killed the Big Bad Wolf. They all knew that the pig could now defend himself, and they did not want this idea of self-defense to spread to the other pigs. The three wolves agreed that they needed a way to get rid of that pig. The first bad wolf said, I have an idea. I will just get my own gun. I will kill that pig and pry his AR-15 from his cold, dead hands. But the first bad wolf could not legally buy a gun because he had a felony on his record. So he just purchased one from another criminal. The next day, happy with his black market gun, the first bad wolf left to kill the pig. When the wolf saw the pig, he placed his crosshairs directly on the pig's head and jerked the trigger. The pig was surprised to hear a gunshot, but was otherwise unhurt. The pig returned fire, striking the wolf three times in the chest. The first bad wolf had heard on WNN that owning a gun would make him an invincible killing machine, so he had not bothered to learn how to use it. As the first bad wolf lay on the ground dying, he looked up and saw the pig standing over him. Optic was loose, the pig said. Please uh, help me. It's not fair, the wolf said while gurgling blood. Not by the hair on my chinny chin chin, the pig replied. So the pig dug, and he dug, and he disposed of the wolf's body where it would never be found. Several weeks after the disappearance of his brother, the second bad wolf said, I have an idea. We need to trick the government into taking that pig's gun away. So the second bad wolf filed a red flag gun violence restraining order against the pig. The wolf had no evidence, so he just made stuff up. The order was granted by a judge without the pig ever even knowing an application had been made. The next day, the second bad wolf watched as the police arrived at the pig's house. They knocked on the door and said, Come out, little pig. We have a warrant for your guns. The little pig opened the door and said, But I don't have any guns. I lost them all in a boating accident. We still need to search, the officer replied. So the little pig inspected the warrant and let the police in. But they did not search very hard because they had looked at the town's gun registry and saw that the pig did not have any guns registered to him. When the second bad wolf saw the cops leave, he approached the pig's house. The second bad wolf banged on the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me in. Why fight it? I am going to kill you no matter what. You don't have any way to defend yourself. Bullets began ripping through the door and into the second wolf's surprised face, shattering his teeth and blasting through his skull. The wolf was dead before his body even hit the ground. Standing over the dead wolf, the pig said, Registered gun? Not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. So the pig dug, and he dug, and he disposed of the wolf's body where it would never be found. Several weeks after the disappearance of his brothers, the third bad wolf thought, and he thought, and he finally said, I don't have any good ideas here. So the third bad wolf thought some more, the third bad wolf kept on thinking, trying to figure out how he could keep eating pigs. After a long time of pondering, the wolf finally had made up his mind. The next day, still not happy with his choice, the third bad wolf went to the pig's house. When he arrived, he politely knocked on the door. What do you want? The pig suspiciously asked. Look, pig, I just came by to talk the wolf said. I am not afraid of judges or cops or laws, but I just can't stay in a place where I might get killed by my victims. So the wolf huffed and he puffed and he buggered right off. As he walked away, he said to himself, 
bacon does taste great, but mutton is pretty tasty too. At least for now, that'll have to do. The end. <laughs>